So welcome to the Results Rules OK podcast. My name is Dave Holland and uh, my guest today, very interesting lady, uh, very interesting business uh, that I'm sure most people would like to hear about the, the work that, that she does. It's uh, Christine Kalusa spouts uh, from Luxembourg and the company is uh, the Feng Shui Concilium. Uh, speciality subject, I think I'm right in saying this, is bringing Feng Shui to offices and homes and lifestyles, but also even websites as well. So, Christine, welcome. Please uh, give us a few uh, intro introduction about yourself. Uh, thanks, David. I'm uh, actually, I'm a um, certificated Feng Shui master. I did my um, degree or my, um, I did my certificate in Hong Kong in 2010. Wow. I've been okay. a student in Germany a long time ago. I grew up in Germany, but I'm a half American, half German citizen. Yeah. So I grew up in Germany and during my study in Germany, I met uh, Sir Norman Foster. Right. He invited me to go to Hong Kong to learn Feng Shui because he inspired me to do this. So I did it one day, 10 years later about. So wow. but <laughs> I went to Hong Kong and did this Feng Shui master and I learned a lot about Feng Shui and since I'm in Luxembourg since uh, 2012. I yeah. uh, try to um, give people advice and consult Feng Shui. And I think I think I'm right in saying I think we, we were talking about this off air. That, that I think on your first day in Luxembourg, you met Lynn and I in Luxembourg. I think pretty much. So we we go back quite some time now, don't we? <laughs> yes, it's uh, eight years ago. It was wow. on the 15th of November. Wow, so eight years plus a little bit. My goodness, time flies, doesn't it? Time flies. Yeah. I remember when when I, when I first came to Luxembourg, we came here in, we've been here for 11 years now. And yeah. uh, somebody said, I met somebody at an event, as, as you do, and they said, oh yeah, we've been here for 10 years now. And I thought, my goodness, 10 years. Uh, that seems like a lifetime. We've been here for 11 years ourselves now. So anyway, it's all yeah. good. It's all good. Yeah. So, so, so for, I, for me, I confess, I, I don't know a lot about Feng Shui. Uh, I know what I see in the press and this sort of thing but so just give give me or give the, the the listeners what is the essence what is feng shui what is the what are the some of the principles uh, well feng shui actually means feng shui um, usually in, in english or in the americans call it different or the chinese they call it funk not feng shui okay the chinese stuff or um, the american chinese are talking about feng shui ah. but the funk is the wind and the shui is the water which means the wind and the water is calmness, so they bring the harmony together. That's the right. whole thing about Feng Shui. So it's, so uh, it is. It's, 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 it's the, the elements, wind and water. Okay, well, yeah. I've learned something. I've learned something now. Um, and so, so you you sort of consult with with people, bringing the principles of Feng Shui to their homes, their their, their offices. How, how does it work? How does it work? What, how do you bring it to life for for people? Uh, Feng Shui is also uh, to bring some um, energy and some harmony and um, happiness and wealth, everything in your environment. Okay. So it could be in the office, it could be in your apartment or in your home office, wherever. It, it has to be um, a clean room, I would say, not the clutter, but it needs to go through. Okay. It has a bad energy and a good energy, and if you have a good energy, you makes a way free, I say, like a, a tunnel, you clean the tunnel and so everybody goes through the tunnel. Right, so okay. It's fine, the energy can go through. Otherwise, if you, uh, for example, it, I mean, the Feng Shui itself is based on the Kua number. Uh, the Kua number, okay, okay, please. I, I, I don't, that's a new one for me as well. So what, what's the, the, the Kua, Kua number? number um, everybody has a different Kua number, so I have it all in, in total nine numbers, nine okay. Kua numbers in Feng Shui, which, um, um, which are too close to the direction. So the direction is um, based on the Kua number. If you have, for example, based Kua number, number number nine, you have all direction. So you have more, um, it's calculated on your birthday and on where you lived in your life and um, it's calculated in, the core number also re also uh, calculate your uh, colors, so your right. favorite colors. For example, I have my living room because my favorite color is yellow and red. So it's a living room is, as Feng Shui says, yellow and red. Same in the right. kitchen, so okay. um, which I did in the home office the same way about. 
And the most thing is the energy, um, if the energy can flow through the room, it's, you have no Feng Shui. So the, this, the, so the, the core number and the, the, the color, is that yeah. something that you are going to use the word calculate? Do you work that out for people? And so that, that a good start point to know how you apply Feng Shui to different people based on the colors and the, and the, the core number? Yeah, yes, sure. I, before I can any do <clears throat> any advice or any consulting, I have to calculate the core number. Right, okay. It is a, it's a CEO of a company. I have to get his core number first. Yeah. Get uh, his office or whatever, first his office clean and then from the single uh, staff people. But um, the core number is a basis, a basic of to do a consultancy or uh, advice. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Right, okay. So that, that is always your start point then, the colors yeah, and the core yeah. number. And the and, core and, number and, yeah, says also um, says exactly the color which you have to have in certain corner and certain direction to be happy and uh, healthy and uh, whatever the love corner, whatever everything is that way with the core number. So, so if uh, this is just, I'm just thinking aloud now. Let's say you're, you're working with a uh, somebody in their home and you've got a you know, husband and wife or partners. If they've got a different core number and a different color how, how do you balance that with them living in the same space is there a compromise or how, how do you work around that uh, usually in, in, in feng shui it has to have a compromise so um, as right. i said the number nine is in the center of the whole uh, it's an um, so have nine uh, direction in feng shui and the number okay. nine is in the center so right the compromise number nine, which means uh, metal and water is going together. Okay. Uh, because Feng Shui has five directions, uh, five um, meanings, water, wind, metal, um, wood, and uh, what is the other one? <laughs> it's, <five directions. laughs> it's just nerves. It's just nerves. You're okay. <laughs> but it has to have five directions. Uh, right. Wood. What is the other one? I will get it. It's yeah. just, it was absolutely nice, fine. Okay, five. And for example, if you have the core number nine, yeah. uh, you can do everything. You can go in, in water, you can go in wind, and you ah, can right, go, okay. go in wood or in earth. Now I got it. Earth is an. Uh, of course, one. there you go. Of course. Six <laughs> elements I have. So, um, yeah. And this is compromise. Yes, okay. Okay. And so when you see somebody's. Um, office or their home or their environment, uh, and you know the the the, the core number and the color. How quickly can you sort of assess what needs to be changed? Because I can imagine if we, I, mean, I know nothing about uh, Feng Shui, I'm sure if you looked at you know my office uh, or, or whatever, you go, oh my goodness, this is the wrong way around. But you know, how quickly can you assess what needs to be changed? What needs to be done? Very quickly, if I have the core number, I know the directions, right. which means. Uh, a person who has the northwest uh, direction, um, he has to sleep with his head or with the head in the northwest direction or the other way around. So it's okay. important uh, how they sleep, in which direction, or in the kitchen, um, has to be in the east or whatever, for example. Right, okay, yeah. okay. But this can li this could literally be the, um, the way a property is designed, though, for a person, couldn't it, as well? Because is that something you would you would get involved with? Yeah, I've been involved already. There's a couple who came to Luxembourg. He is a Portuguese. She's a Philippine uh, teacher at the university. And uh -huh. uh, they asked me to build a house uh, in, in Luxembourg regard to the principle of Feng Shui. And it was right. really successful with the kids. So they had uh, different uh, core numbers which are fitting together. Yeah. So I had to use the number nine, which takes all over the, the other eight numbers. But yeah. it was good. Yeah. So, so it starts with from design designer property as well and, and into so so I mean, being, being very unkind this is not just a case of rearranging the furniture this is actually design concept based on direction that there's a there's a, a scientific approach to it you know, there's a there's a technical approach to this as well but also you have to arrange the furniture that way right okay okay when i moved in in my apartment here i had to uh, usually uh, the build the bed on the other side with uh, all the plackets but mm -hmm. i have to change it because of feng shui so 
Right, okay. Well, just, just, just out, of, out of interest, your experience, when you work with uh, an individual or a couple or a business, whatever it is, how, how wrong, how bad are the environments they're working in? Because assuming, you know, if, if the Feng Shui enables this happiness and flow of energy, if they haven't got that, they must be, you know, it affects them negatively. How, how bad are some of the environments that people don't even realise, perhaps? Well, I have to um, ask them or I have to advise them to declutter first. Right. Because I have no energy. Uh, even I, as a Feng Shui master, I go in and I think, oh my God, everything is cool. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You, should, you, should, you should see my, my workshop in the barn. I, 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 you would shudder at that, I think, but anyway. <laughs> no, but I think I had I have an experience. Uh, I, had a, I have a, a friend, a lady. She has about uh, 20 Maine Coon uh, cats. Uh, she has a breed of the cats, the Maine Coon. Yeah. And uh, she also has uh, horses and she has dogs. And right. So she has a house somewhere in, in, the, in, in, in Germany, somewhere in the forest, but mm -hmm. ne nothing is clean because she leaves a bin for the dog, for the cats, oh, right. and the, the other room for the, so this I told you, if you want to have business, we have to clean your house first. Right, okay, yeah. but there's, there's been a lot of um, information or, or chatter around in terms of decluttering, you know, getting rid of things that don't bring joy and happiness. Is that the, the sort of, uh, aligned with what you do to a degree by the sound of it, the decluttering anyway. I mean, some people uh, don't need anything around, no uh, little things, I just have a clean room, it's fine. Yeah. So, um, so I just need to, I just need to tell them where they have to place the uh, furniture. But right. some other people, as my friend, she is full of uh, cat food and uh, dog stuff and hairs around. So uh, because she has a Canadian uh, chepa, some white dogs. A right, breed. okay, wow. Everything in the house. So <laughs> it's full of uh, cats and dogs. It's fine. Feng Shui has nothing to do with it, but it needs a uh, way the energy cannot go through the house. It right. Okay. Interesting. Fun. Interesting. Yeah. And so when you, uh, I mean, this is just, it interests me and hopefully people listening as well. So you work with somebody in their office environment or their home environment. What, what changes do you see? What, what, what do you recognize the changes in their levels of happiness and energy? Do you see the differences? Any, any examples of that perhaps? Yeah, I see it exactly when I go in an office and I see the CEO who is uh, in the back of the door. Uh, he's, it's definitely wrong. Oh, right. Okay. It's uh, Feng Shui. You cannot sit. I would like to sit the other way around in the back of the door. Yeah. So I could have a few outside, but I don't have a big view, just the green. But mm. uh, it's wrong to sit. I would say it imme immediately. I would say the seat is wrong. The, 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 the desk is wrong. Everything is wrong. Right. It's one of the things which I know is um, I have it in my head. But also, um, it's too messy or whatever. It's I have it straight away in my head to declutter or to put place some stuff different way, like say doing it in an office. Yeah? Right. Okay. And, and so, so when you 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 look at an, an office environment, have you ever had the case where you you say to somebody, uh, I'm assuming based on your colours and core number, this yeah. is how your office should look, yeah. and do they have, do they go, yep, yeah, that's great, and they accept it, or do they they push back a little bit? My experience is I uh, said they're not pushing back. Yeah, good. Because if I explain how uh, it's going to work, it's good. So could be uh, really positive. Everything, wealth, health, happiness, love, everything could be good. Right. When you, when you believe in it, Feng Shui, you have to, it's a belief. It's not a, it's not a that, philosophy. I mean, it's 5,000 years old in Chinese, but it's a new age. So yes. 1970s in the US, they came with Feng Shui, the Chinese with Feng Shui and the, um, the healing stuff and also the, the, the acupuncture. Yeah. So, so this started in the 70s, the same with uh, Feng Shui, the medicine, right. the Chinese, so yeah. But, but as you say, it is this sort of, uh, as with a lot of things, I, I think, is that you have to believe that it is going to work yeah. and that is probably part of the magic i would assume that you have the the, the the office realigned and if you believe it's going to be make you feel better then it, it sort of will to a degree as well i suppose yeah 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and what sort of, you know, what reaction do you get? Because I you know it's my, I have little experience of, of Feng Shui, only what I see on social media and it, it does have a, a slightly unfortunate you know, comedy uh, reputation, which is not well founded, but it is out there a little bit. I remember seeing some years ago, there was a, an advert in the UK, I think it was Carlsberg, and they get this, this feng shui consultant goes into this guy's house and rearranges the house and the principles of feng shui. And, and all he's got is a, a TV, a chair and, and a fridge full of beer. I and mean, that, that's it. And that's really, that's, that, that's maybe the, the image that people unfortunately have. What sort of, how, how do you find is feng shui becoming more sort of acceptable or, or known about now? Or do you have any, any sort of pushback on that at all? No, I mean, actually, it's it's a principle of Feng Shui not to have a lot of things around. So right, okay. Just, uh, for example, as you said, on TV and just a sofa and a table. But this is not a uh, Feng Shui for living. Yes. This is the Chinese uh, Feng Shui. The Asian uh, Feng Shui is a live on it, the Chinese, because the reason is I have no space in China. Right. Or in Asia, I live on little places, I have not anything around because... This is the basic of Feng Shui, but the yes. Western Feng Shui is different. The Western, which I learned, I learned the Western Feng Shui and they told me uh, you can have some favorite uh, things in your corner or in, in a certain corner or flowers, whatever, but not an empty room. This is not the right. basic. This is not the principle of Feng Shui, of the right. Western Feng Shui. Yes, the okay. The Chinese one is different uh, because as I said, they have no room. They have I've been in China, I've been in Hong Kong, so I have a room, my office, so three people living in the size of my office. Right, so, okay, wow. We do a different, different in environment then completely over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I mean, it's so, different, yeah. If you think Feng Shui, is it uh, much more sort of recognized in, in, in the East, if you like, than it is in, in Europe, or is that is that changing now as well? I think it's changing now because yeah. you don't see it when you go, uh, you, as you know, don't know about Feng Shui, you don't know. But as I told you, uh, when you go in a Chinese restaurant here in, 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 in Europe, yeah. you have the, base, the, the aquarium or a fountain in front of the door. Yes. Hey, yes. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned this. You not realize if you don't know about Feng Shui. Yeah, I know. You, I know you, you've mentioned this before, and I, and I think I've mentioned we have because where we are, we, we, this is you know, northern France, and we can we nip across the border uh, yeah. to Germany. To and there's a there's a, a, a Chinese uh, Asian takeaway there, and they've got a, a little fountain and a big fish tank in the yeah. reception yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. And that. Is I assume it's fair. I thought it was the, the ingredients for the food, but it's not. No. It's Feng Shui. So <laughs> I've, I've learned. It's not the same for you. No. <laughs> so I have fifteen. It's. Uh, I mean, it's important. Uh, it is the water, the Shui from yeah. Feng Shui, which comes and it is brings always uh, some energy in the water. Right. Okay. So, so it's water. I mean, water. Well, all the elements are clearly important, but water. In in a room, or is that that's is that important in most forms of feng shui? Very important in feng shui. Yeah. Right, okay. But it's always important which direction, which uh, position it has placed in the wrong place. It's wrong. So okay. it has to be in the wrong, in the right place. So. And does the water? I mean, this is just something I've picked up on my sort of travels. The water, um, either this sort of static water in a tank or flowing water. Is there a difference there for the you know, is yeah, flowing water? In, um, Feng Shui needs a flowing water. It's it does, okay. The energy is flowing and the water needs to be uh, either a fountain or an aquarium, flowing yeah. water, so not still water. So, so, so every, every maybe people listening and watching this will go to a you know a, a Chinese restaurant looking for the fountain now and looking for the fish tank. Well, I must sure. say in Luxembourg, since I'm here, most Chinese have it. Yeah, no, I, I think in, in hindsight, I think they, I think they do because, but but again, I think as you said, I, I didn't realize that, that was there because of Feng Shui. I thought it was the uh, the hors d'oeuvres on on order there, but it wasn't. It wasn't. No. <laughs> No, 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 not the other no. <laughs> no And then so, so, so what, what, as I was saying, what sort of people do you work with? It's anybody, I guess, but typically, you know, what sort of people are interested in this? Are they at the house design stage? Is it just for their own, their apartment or their property or the office? What sort of people you know, do you work with best? 
Uh, most people, Lisa, they want to know about Feng Shui, so yeah. I tell them about Feng Shui, and other people want to um, rebuild the house. Yeah. As I did, and some people who are here, um, some in charge with an office, they want the Feng Shui uh, yeah. in the office, so in the whole office. So, so really, the, 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 by the sound of it, just what you're saying, that to, to, to do what you do, the earlier that you are involved in the your design or the layout, the, the, the better really, that, that, that you can do more work for them. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. And, and yeah. To, to develop, to, to, to work out people's, the, 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 the core number and the, um, the, the colors, is that, does that take a long time or you, you can do it no, with magic? It's, only, or? Uh, it's a uh, kind of formula which I have in my head. Right, so, okay. Okay. Uh, because when you study in, in China or in whatever in Asia, you get it like a brainstorm in your head. Yeah. What you need to do first to do anyhow before you start with Feng Shui, you need to know right. uh, how you start. So and this is the core number. Okay. The first thing to do. Okay. Otherwise, no way. <laughs> so, so when you when you walk into a a room or an office, uh, does it do you get sort of affected if it's not to the principles of Feng Shui? Do you feel sort of uncomfortable at all? Do you sense there's not good energy there at all? I'm not, a, I mean, actually I'm a computer science. I'm not so inspired of the feelings, not the, I right. don't, okay. but I, uh, I just can see it's the wrong place. This, I can see it's long, uh, the office is the right, wrong direction or whatever. Right, but, okay, uh, okay. I'm not a spiritual woman as uh, some other people, but I'm sure. not this way, so. And I, I get tempted, I, 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 I get tempted to, straighten pictures in in people's office i can't be doing with pictures that aren't quite straight and i want to wonder if you were tempted to move the desk around just in just in case but still never mind, never mind. so so for people listening to, to to this i mean um obviously this is a a, a, a not a unique service but a very unusual slightly unusual service you you offer um how can people connect with you how do they contact you if they want to have a conversation you know, what, what's the first stage that people do to to sort of engage with you and work with you well, so actually they can um, connect me through linkedin through okay. facebook instagram or through my website uh, okay. it's already everything on i can ask for a cool number which i do yes which i calculate for people and i give them the color no more Yep. And can, if they want more information, I will give them as a consultant or advertise, ad, uh, doing some advice for them. So perfect. And then again, what, what, what's the? Would you have a favourite project that you've been involved with that was particularly unique or anything like that that you could uh, share? Any any stories? Uh, well, actually, my uh, since I'm in Luxembourg, I had a couple of people who wanted to uh, rebuild uh, the apartment or the house. Okay. And the Spanish lady in uh, she lived in uh, Strassen, and okay. I <laughs> she was totally a mess. I mean, she was totally <laughs> untidy, <laughs> and she was actually happy to, that I did not in her house. And eventually, I uh, placed the furniture, everything, and then she met a man uh, and lived, left uh, Luxembourg. She's back to Spain to Madrid. Right. And, but she uh, introduced me to another woman. She lives in Choutranche, uh -huh. whatever this name. Uh, and uh, she was funny because she was a bit spiritual. So okay. um, she had, uh, I don't know, usually in Feng Shui, you don't have dry flowers because people are dying. Oh, OK. Uh, the dry, dry flowers not good. No, because my mom, she never believed in Feng Shui. Oh, I see. Her, well, yeah, listen, you have to take all the flowers away, the dead flowers. She was hanging all the roses which she got on in, in the cellar somewhere on the line. And uh, this was not good because I told her Feng Shui doesn't make any sense. Right, okay. And her father died, my grandfather died. Right. Since this day, she just took everything of dead flowers away. Really? Because no. dead flowers in Feng Shui have a bad sign. So. Wow! Oh, so there, there's a there's a, a top tip. Then get rid of the uh, the the dead flowers, the, the dry flowers. Then my goodness, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you this. It's uh, but when I go in a house and I see all the dry flowers, which not you can buy some flowers dry, but if you keep it for years and they're dry, it's not good. Really. So, 
Yeah. I know there's, I know we're in, in, in France, we made this mistake. You have to be very careful uh, in, in France, but probably in other countries as well. If you're invited to go to somebody's house, it's yeah. the done thing to take some, you know, take some flowers. And when we were invited to a neighbor's house, when we first came to France, and I think I, I'm going to guess now. This might be wrong. We picked up some lilies, I think it was, and and we took these lilies around. And of course, lilies are a sign of death or something in France, oh. and uh, it, we weren't very popular after that. So you have to be real careful with the, the code of the flowers. It was quite uh, it was quite new to us, but still, never mind, never mind. No, the flowers, lilies, is not bad. Uh, so the flowers in Feng Shui only bad flowers if they have a. Um, like a triangle, the so leaf, the leaf has to be rounded or over, not uh, oh, really? a triangle. So these flowers are good. Lilies are good. They are not uh, bad oh. flowers in Feng Shui. Oh, thank don't, goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> and, 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 and seriously, the, 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 this, the, 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 the triangular flowers or the round yeah. leaves, why? Is, is there a reason behind you or is it, yeah, it just, reason, that's just what it is? Yeah, the, the Feng Shui says uh, if you have uh, not round flowers, um, the energy cannot go through the flower and the flower cannot bring the energy back to the human or to people who live next to the flower. So, right, okay, okay. So yeah. I believe in it totally with the flowers. I believe it as well. So, um, yeah. No, it's, it's, look, it, it's, it is a, definitely a fascinating subject. You know, it, it, it is because you know, we talk for hours about it, but I think you know, to get to, to declutter um, certainly our house, we've got to get rid of the dogs. That'd be the first thing to do. They, they cause chaos everywhere. But, oh, uh, yeah. but, but how, how does Feng Shui cope with pets? And I know you've got a fabulous uh, uh, pet as well, part of the family, and, and we've got the, the Labrador and the Beagle. Does that, is that sort of okay? Or do they, are they, they disturbance in the force? No. It has nothing, Feng Shui has nothing to do with uh, pets or animals. It's right. everything fine. Yeah. Okay. So we Usually could, we... Feng Shui, a dog, uh, or some dogs have a certain corner. If you can do this, uh, calculate this in Feng Shui for the dog. Oh, really? Oh, you can dog, do the. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I could do it with Murphy, but I have Murphy now since I'm in Luxembourg, so it's fine. But uh, usually dogs also can have. Uh, Dogs or horses or even cats can have a, a certain corner where they can stay on the bed which they have. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the beagle has a certain corner where she gravitates towards. It's called yeah. the, the food cupboard. That's where she goes in yeah. hope that something's going to drop out for her. But anyway. <laughs> Murphy has it every day. Exactly, exactly. I think the dogs, they, they train us, don't they? I think rather than the, the other way around. The other way around, but still, never mind. Okay, so so um, it, it is a genuinely interesting subject. So people listening to this and they're interested in their home, their apartment, their office being yeah. you know re redesigned. But you also do um, websites in a within the principles of Feng Shui. Could you just uh, how does that work? What does that mean? A, a Feng yeah, Shui I mean, website. I mean, I had the idea when I came to Luxembourg yeah. uh, because I, before I've been only in IT, not in Feng Shui. Yeah. Uh, I decided I will maybe do a website with um, Feng Shui and it has to do with the logo, it has to do with the color. Right. It has to be uh, where the logo is placed on the website, the color is okay. important, uh, based on the QR number. So, right. Okay, so, yeah. Um, and all images or whatever, so whatever the lights or whatever is on, in, on the website has to be in a certain direction. Right. Okay. Wow. And again, and just out of interest, you're looking at the, I mean, the colors are clearly important uh, in the design and the, the home and the office. Does it apply to people's clothing as well? Are there certain colors that people, uh, given their core number? Really. Not really. No. no? Okay. So it just doesn't affect. All right. Okay. No, not really. This is something different. It has nothing to do with uh, Feng Shui. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I can keep. My color is red. I can yep. use green, but it, uh, I'm sure it's not fitting me. But uh, usually, uh, people believe in Feng Shui. They will go along with the color which their favorite color is. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know because I I have a rather fetching yellow and green shirt that Lynn hates. But I was going to say, well, if it's in my Feng Shui color, I'm going to I can justify my wearing it now. But still, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not. Okay. So, um, so to contact you, people listening, they want to contact you. Um, I'll put your, um, if it's okay, your email details on the bottom of the of the video. Um, but LinkedIn, Facebook, websites, 
and is that that you just have a sort of a, a, an introduction conversation i guess is that is that true yeah i will do it yeah i will okay. do it yeah. Fantastic. Good. Well, look, it's been a, it's been a joy. I, I've, I've learned something anyway. The joy of doing these sort of conversations is I, I, I learn a lot as well. So thank you for your uh, time. It's been uh, it's been really interesting. I hope people listening, uh, watching have found it interesting as well. And please, everybody watching, listening, please reach out to Christine and say hello or thanks and have a conversation about it. Um, I'll be back uh, in a week's time and we have some other uh, exciting guests uh, lined up. So watch the watch this space. Uh, but for now christine thank you i really appreciate your time thank and you, uh, thank you for people listening and watching and uh, i'll see you next week in the meantime have a have a great week bye for now thank you so thank you my pleasure bye-bye bye-bye